Welcome. The topic for today is prayers of Hanukkah. Al Anisim Halel. The special prayers that we add on the occasion of the special holiday of Hanukkah. What are the halachic parameters that apply to these prayers? When the Jewish people were in the desert, just after leaving Egypt, God gave them a very special mitzvah. God said, build me a mishkan. Build me a place where I can dwell. What's called in English, the tabernacle. And the Jewish people built a place that would be considered where God's presence dwells. Once they came to Israel, they built a similar place that ultimately remained the temple. The holy temple stood for many hundreds of years. During all those years, there was a very amazing miracle that took place. There were a number of miracles that took place in the tabernacle and the temple, but there's one that specially stands out. It took place with the menorah. Yes, there was a menorah in the temple, and even beforehand in the tabernacle, before we had the menorah of Hanukkah. The menorah of Hanukkah that we light today is just in memory of the menorah that was in the temple. But initially, this menorah that was in the temple and the tabernacle was lit by the Kohen every single evening. The special mitzvah of the menorah was to light all of its seven candles every night to burn through the night. And so, there was a certain amount of oil that the Kohen who serviced in the temple would put in each and every night. He would add a specific amount of oil into each candle that would be able to last throughout even the longest nights of the year. It would be able to last even throughout the long winter nights. But that's about as much oil as it had. And each and every night he would light the candles and the candles would burn through the night and then go out in the morning once the oil was finished. All of them would become extinguished each and every night except for one. One of them, each and every night, kept on burning. It had the same amount of oil, just like the other candles, but it kept on burning till the next evening. The next evening when the Kohen would come and he would have to light the candles again, he would actually have to first extinguish that candle and then add oil and relight it. And once again the next day, all the candles would become extinguished by the morning except for that one. And that one burned again till the next evening. And so on each and every night. That special candle, although it had only as much oil to last, for the 12 hours of the night, as the other candles, would last each and every day for 24 hours till the coin came to relight it again. That was called the special miracle of the Ner HaMaravi. It was a miracle that took place with the westernmost candle. And what was the reason for this miracle? We know that God just doesn't make miracles without a reason. Chazal, our great leaders, have told us the reason. The westernmost part, the westernmost direction, represents where God's presence dwells. We know that even till today, when a person visits the holiest site in the world, the site of the Temple Mount in Yerushalayim, Jewish people go to pray by the western wall. And as we have passed down, Me'olam l'zozo shechina mikoysa l'ma'aruvi. Me'olam l'zozo shechina mikoysa l'ma'aruvi. The westernmost wall, the westernmost place, is where God's presence always dwells. And so God made a special miracle each and every night. 
Each and every night he wanted to show the Jewish people, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm right here. So even though that westernmost candle would have the same amount of oil as all the others, it would continue to burn. God said, look, I'm making a miracle. It doesn't have enough oil to last for 24 hours. I'm going to make it last 24 hours. And if you have a question whether it was just a coincidence, it will be that way each and every night. Each and every night. From the time the Jewish people were in the desert, and they had the Mishkan, the tabernacle, all the way through history, through the entire time of the first temple, that candle burned every night, not only for the whole night, but for the subsequent day. It was an ongoing miracle. The miracle continued to take place for over 900 years. Just like all miracles, we know that God sends it to us according to our level of merits. God doesn't just do miracles. He'll do miracles if we're worthy. And so therefore, as long as the Jewish people were on par, they were keeping the mitzvahs at a certain level, God performed this miracle nightly. But once the level fell, we lost this miracle. This took place as we have passed down shortly after the passing, right after the passing, of the great Kohen, Shimon HaTzadik. Shimon HaTzadik. Right after his passing, that westernmost candle didn't burn anymore for 24 hours. It would burn every night, only through the night, just like the other candles. Our level of service as a nation had already fallen a bit. We couldn't merit anymore that special miracle. But what took place a short while afterwards in history, during the days of Hanukkah, when, as we know, the Greek Empire threatened all the Jews in Israel to have to give up their religious beliefs, to have to give up their religious practices. And the Maccabees, a group of devout, keeping Jewish people, fought together with self-sacrifice to overcome the Greek Empire. God said, I'm proud of you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your self-sacrifice and even putting your life on line because you believe in me. And because of that, I'm going to give you a special gift. I'm going to give you back the special miracle of the westernmost candle. Just like before the passing of the great Shimon HaTzadik, that candle would burn for 24 hours, I'm going to give you a little bit of that same miracle for eight days. And so, as we all know the story, after Greece removed their presence from the area of occupied Israel, the Jewish people came back to the temple and they looked around to fulfill the mitzvahs that they used to do. Specifically, they wanted to fill the mitzvah of lighting the menorah. They looked around and they couldn't find where there was any pure oil because the menorah in the temple must be lit with pure oil. And then, almost miraculously, they discovered underneath one of the tiles of the floor that there had been hidden a little bit of pure oil. The amount of pure oil that was there was enough to light the seven candles for one night only. Didn't have enough for the time it would take to produce new pure oil, which was approximately a week to eight days. But they did what they could. They took the oil, they poured it into the seven candles, and it was enough to burn for one night for seven candles. It was one night's worth. God said, I'm going to give you the same miracle that took place with the westernmost candle, now with all the candles. And when they awoke in the morning, the Kohanim found that all the candles were still burning. So it continued throughout the first day. Came the second night, once again, the candles continued to burn. Through the second night and the whole third day. And again the third night, the whole fourth day. The fourth, fifth night and the whole sixth day, etc. Until 
the, the seventh day through the eighth night. God repeated a miracle that had taken place previously for over 900 years. There was a message in that miracle. God was saying, just like during those years where each and every night I would allow the westernmost candle to burn. And the reason was because I wanted to show you how close I am to you, how present I am in your lives. So too, take this message during the days of Hanukkah. Realize that even though your level has fallen and you don't have this miracle every night, even though you don't even have the menorah of the temple, even though you don't even have the temple itself, but I am still with you. My presence is still here. Light those candles and you'll see. I'll cause them to keep on going just like I caused the westernmost candle. I am here and present in your lives no less than I was when you received the Torah at Mount Sinai. And so subsequently, the great leaders of the generation, the Sanhedrin instituted, and each and every year when these nights come, that Jewish people light candles in their home. True, our menorah is no longer exactly like the menorah of the temple. It's not supposed to be. The temple had seven candles, and we light eight to remember the eight days. But each and every night when we light those candles, we ignite a message to ourselves. We ignite the message that God's presence is here and alive with us today just as much as it was in previous years all the way back when Jewish people were in the desert or when they had the temple. We go around, today it's considered we're in exile. We don't really see God's presence. We don't see Him openly like we used to in the time of the temple. But when it comes to those special nights of Hanukkah, we know that God is giving us a message. When we light those candles, we can look at them for a few seconds and think, what's the message? What's the idea? Right. There was a time where God allowed these same candles just to keep on burning. Even though they didn't have anything to burn, they kept on burning because God wanted to show us how close he is to us. And then we'll take that message and carry it with us throughout all the days of the upcoming year. Today, we wanted to go over some of the parameters that apply to the special prayers that we add on Hanukkah. The first prayer that we add is in the special tefillah of Shemona Esrei, in the tefillah Amida. We add the special edition called Al Hanisim. Al Hanisim that we add in the bracha that's second to last in the Shemona Esrei. The bracha is the bracha of Moedim, where we thank Hashem. We thank Hashem al Nisech Hashem for the miracles that go on with us each and every day. The ones that we see and the ones we don't see. And on the days of Hanukkah, during each one of the three prayers, we add a special edition in this bracha of Moedim. So you could see the words in the Siddur. But the question is, what happens if a person forgets? We're so used to davening the whole year without this addition. What happens if a person forgets? And the rule is the following. If a person continued forward within the bracha of Moedim, then he could still go back afterwards and say the al But once he reaches the end of the bracha, and he says, Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Ata Hashem, and he says God's name, then it would be improper to go back already. We know it's wrong to say God's name in vain. So once we get to that point, we already pronounce God's name in a blessing form, then we shouldn't go back anymore and repeat the al There are some people who are taught and proficient in psukim, in verses, and then they add special words that they can turn the blessing into a verse. Baruch Ato Hashem Lamdei 
ברוך אתה השם למדני חוקיך. Which means, teach me your statutes. And that's actually a posik. So we didn't use God's name in vain, and then a person could go back and repeat the Alanis. But if a person is not familiar with that verse, once we say God's name, we don't go back, and it's not necessary to go back. It is possible in such a case to add the Alanisim, the specific addition, before the second Yiyul Ratzon. Right before we step back in the Shemona Esrei, three steps, we say one sentence, Yiyul Ratzon, may it be to your will, Hashem, everything that I just prayed for. Right before that, we can add, in the form of a special prayer, this addition. Yehi Ratzon Nufanecha, may it be your will, Shetas Elonu Nisim flows. That you should do with us miracles and wonders, and we continue onwards. And we continue. The second place that we add this additional prayer is in Birkas Hamazon, Birkat Hamazon. When we finish eating an entire meal that included bread, then we say the special blessing at the end, called blessing over eating, blessing grace after meals, birkas hamazon. We add in the second blessing the addition of al anisim. Once again, if a person forgot it, if he came to the part where he pronounced Hashem's name already, baruch atu Hashem ala oret mazon, he said Hashem's name, then we cannot go back. If it's before Hashem's name, a person can go back and say the al anisim. In the case where a person forgot the Alani Sim, it's possible to add it all the way at the end where we say Harachaman. Harachaman is a Kenali Mosa Mashiach. Right before that we say Horachamon, Huyasa Lunani Sim and Flows, Kmosha Sisil Sana Bayamam is Manazet, and we continue onwards. Even if a person forgot these options, even if you forgot it to add the extra prayer at the end of Shimon Ezra, at the end of Birkas Amazan, a person still has fulfilled his obligation. It's not necessary to go back and daven the Shemona Esri again. It's not necessary to go back and say the Bekas Amazon again. A person has fulfilled the obligation. It's not a prayer that withholds the fulfillment of our Shemona Esri or Bekas Amazon. And so therefore we should be careful to try and remind ourselves to say it, but if it was totally forgotten, a person does not have to go back. The last prayer we wanted to speak about today is the special edition of Hallel during the eight days of Hanukkah. During these eight days of Hanukkah, we say the full Hallel consecutively. It doesn't compare to any other time of the year other than Sukkot. We have the ability to praise and to thank Hashem for eight days straight with the complete Hallel. So being that it's an actual requirement, it's the complete Hallel, not the custom of a half halal that's recited, for example, on Rosh Chodesh, we need to be especially careful with the halachic parameters of halal. One of the things that's necessary to be careful of in halal is to say halal standing. Even if a person is tired, they could sit down, maybe when they're waiting for the chazan, they could sit down for a little while, but essentially, the, all the words of the halal should be said while standing. Also, another rule of halal is that the words need to be said in order. If a person got mixed up and he said one verse before the other, we need to go back to wherever the mistake was and then say the whole thing in order. And we need to make sure to say all the words. If a person said the entire halal, but he didn't say all the words, said it too quickly, he missed the word, then he was not gomer as a halal. He didn't finish the halal. And so, we want to be extra careful during these days to say all the words of halal, say them in order, and say them standing. And of course, whenever possible, to sing and thank Hashem, as is the whole idea of halal and hodaya, to thank Hashem for the great miracles that were in those times, in our days. May God help and we'll be able to fulfill all the special parameters of the prayers properly. 
to express our innermost feelings of thanks and praise to God during these special days of Hanukkah. And we be zeicher, may we merit to carry with us the message of the Hanukkah candles and the days of Hanukkah. That no matter what, no matter when, whether we're in the desert, whether we're at the temple, or whether we're in exile, God is here and alive in our lives, just like He was back then, by Yamim Hahem, Bazman Hazer, in our days. Thank you.